Hello everyone, it's September 18th, 2018, it's Tuesday, it's Harp Tuesday! And in this episode of Harp Tuesday, I'm going to do something similar to that episode I did on the prelude from Debussy's Sweet Bergamosque. I'm going to do sort of a short problem-solving episode on the end of Sametno's The Moldau, or the Hans Trinicek's wonderful transcription of this. So this is, of course, um, a fantastic piece of music, one of my absolute favorite pieces to play, and I'm preparing it for my fall concert tour. I'm actually leaving for Europe in a week's time, so maybe I'll see some of you there, or back in Victoria, for example. And the very end of it, I posted on my blog, I posted a, a clip of that from a practice recent practice session. It's got these great uh, hand-over-hand arpeggios. <laughs> And it's, it's challenging enough as it is, but there's something we can do on that to make it easier, and that's using enharmonics. So if we try to do it as written, we keep fighting over the same strings, right? So the very beginning. Trying to play that same E with both hands. The same E. And there's several spots, for example, the big one at the end where we repeat it four times. If we do it as written, uh, a gap we get to play a B before we have to replace that but but it just it's becomes harder to do it smoothly and cleanly sure we try to place it at the last minute but if we use these enharmonics it's much easier so if we set an A sharp and a D sharp ahead of time from the start of this this is the last three lines of the piece we can utilize those. So originally, uh, and, and again, just thinking about problem solving. So originally when I learned this, I had the D sharp and I doubled the E and the D flat. Uh, this was something that my teacher had done and her daughter had done. Um, so for example, at the beginning, uh, right, they can, we can now place the right hand and the left hand. Let me just angle this down just a tiny bit so you can see that so we're we place um left thumb on this e and right fourth finger on the d sharp and the reason i did that is it's safer to find this d sharp than it is to ha say have this and try and find that e i can go here and still be late finding this and not buzz but hold that thought, because uh, we're going to revisit that. Again, same idea. The If we're given an option, we can either play this D sharp first and then this E flat, or E flat and then D sharp. It's a smaller stretch this way, but it means if the left hand's a little bit late getting up here, Play that thumb there's much more risk of buzzing whereas there's there's really no way of that we're going to buzz placing that fourth finger beneath the thumb so we double that and then here again you can double the Instead of this, which is a slightly harder shape to find, we can go this. So it's like a G root position, uh, plus plus this. What is it? Ninth, uh, tenth up here. And I had no harmonics apart from that, doing the D sharp instead of the E, just for the ease of the shape of the hand. But they the fingers weren't fighting over the same notes. And then on this big one, again, I think this is slightly, potentially a slightly easier shape to find with a D sharp down here rather than an E. And again, we'll first play the top note and then we get to find that D sharp. So hopefully you can see that. Maybe I will even zoom in 
just a tiny bit. Um, try to adjust my focus point. And uh, I'm going to put the hands quite far apart so you can hopefully see. Okay, uh, I don't know if you can see that fourth finger placing, but. Rather than so here it is with the enharmonic everything's ringing here it is replacing on the E so if I work hard at it I can get that pretty good but I'm never gonna get it quite as good as where everything gets to stay ringing and same thing up here E and then D sharp repeat that. So that was the, sort of the first step and that was something that was in, in a sense given to me. And then as I worked on it over the years, the second, so we start with this, right? Um, this one bothered me with that repeated B. It's not right away, but it's very similar to the next section where we have the B, we have a note, and then we're playing that B again. And I realized at some point, I realized, hey, wait a minute, B flat, I can play that as an A sharp. I don't need the A at any point here. And in fact, I don't need, haven't needed the A for a long time. So that I can do, um, sorry, uh, whatever it is. Instead of it's there, it is replacing, and here it is ringing because we're using the N harmonic. It's a slightly maybe more awkward shape, but four and three are right next to each other, which is much better than having them be further apart. And yes, I think this is maybe easier, but this feels great. This feels really good. Again, by four, having four and three next to each other, in some ways that makes it even more comfortable for them. Right, so, or. Or, I just get to place everything earlier if I want to, because the hands aren't fighting over the same strings. And so that, that's, I think, just a, a really good thing. And the final thing I wanted to talk about, again, this idea of problem solving and always being, maybe I'll just zoom back out a little bit so I can talk to you directly. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> always being, uh, always thinking about a piece that you're working on and, and, and being willing to evaluate and see if there's a better way of doing it and just kind of being aware of where are problem spots, what can I do to, to solve those? Maybe it's just, I need, to, I need to play better, right? I need to work on my technique. I just need to work on that spot. I need to practice that spot. But sometimes there's this change like this, which is a change that, it's kind of a magical change, right? By using that in harmonics, it gets easier and better and sounds better. And we have to work less in a way. It's not that we have to work harder. It makes it easier for us and it, 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 anytime we can find something like that, I think that's just uh, a great thing to find. So is this time, and again, that, that idea of always evaluating this time as I was working on this again and learning it, I was getting bothered by the transition out of the, the little bit right before this. Uh, about that how by playing top note first and then bottom of the anharmonic it's a much safer placement but what was happening is I was playing this so loudly and pulling this so far out of position that I was interfering with this E um, uh, also playing the E I was maybe 
touching the fourth finger. So just that this placement was actually not working as well as I wanted. So I changed it. I'm now doing... I just have to place this before I play the left hand. Um, or just place cleanly. And I think what I'm finding is I'm happier with my chances of not buzzing. I feel my chances of not buzzing are, are, are good. And it lets me play this as loud as I would like and as firmly as I would like rather than this where I'm not going to buzz from placing but I'm was getting more buzzing than I would like from the just from the, the grabbing of the strings so um, anyway there it is uh, maybe I'll close I'll, I'll post the close this with that little practice session um, which you can also find out I'll, I'll post a link you can find it if you want to watch it just on its own and hope this was useful so again that idea of applying to anything that you're working on of just seeing if there's maybe a better fingering or a more effective or efficient way of doing things. So hope you enjoyed that. Maybe see you in Europe and I will see you for Harp Tuesday in two weeks time. Cheers.